Just wait for it all to realize it's on. My internet, of course, chose a uh, frustrating time to drop out. Let's get the radio parallax on, get our audio levels right. Right, I. So I normally need to put me up a bit. Well, maybe not quite that much though. Okay, how's that? Hopefully, looks all right. And we'll do that. And maybe about there. Hopefully, that looks all right. And I better reload that page because I reckon it's probably gone stale from the internet dropout. Yay! We are online. Uh, oh, so the chat module hasn't loaded. Let me try and reload that. Welcome along, folks. You can see there's four of you on there. I'm just going to reload that page again. Uh, floppy. Capacity. Improve. Cool. Well, that's kind of weird. It's busy saying that there's um, zero people watching, but then it says that there's four of you in the chat. Hey, Judge Drop. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, good evening, morning, weekend. Exactly. So it's uh, it's absolutely morning and weekend here. It's Saturday morning, uh, twelve to six in the morning, uh, as we get underway. Um, hey, Cake Apocalypse. Welcome along as well. So let's have a look. I'll show you. Well, as you, uh, while I load that up, actually, a bit of a, a recap, right? So we've been looking at how much data we can fit on a single 1.44 meg floppy disk in the Mega 65 standard 1.44 meg floppy drive, uh, knowing full well that we should be able to do quite a bit more than 1.44 meg. Uh, we know that the Amiga uh, was able to do 1.76, for example, uh, that you could get the installation media for Windows and stuff towards the end of the uh, uh, the PC floppy era. Uh, with sort of 1.8, 1.9 meg. Um, we've already blown out the water, we can get 2.2 or 2.4. Uh, and oh, sorry. I don't know whether you can hear that, there's possums fighting on the roof outside. Uh, we've also got fruit bats out there at the moment um, to add to the interest level. But the... Um, oh, I've completely lost my train of thought from the possums fighting out there. Um, Howdy, Kithkanan64, Andy Magic Knight, welcome along. Yeah, set the spiders onto the possums. <laughs> Indeed, that will just make the spiders bigger and healthier and fatter. We probably don't really want to do that. Um, so, yeah, so that's right. So the, the main difference that we're doing at the moment is that we're using variable data rate, a bit like the 1541 does, uh, you know, with zoned recording, uh, because on a three and a half inch disc, the difference in length between the inside and outside track is really big. It's a factor of about 1.6, uh, which is actually more even than what the um, uh, the five and a quarters had. And there's actually uh, the achievable data density probably actually exceeds that difference because the uh, the longer outside tracks, which is track zero, the inside tracks that are short is track 79. Um, those longer tracks are whizzing by faster. Uh, and so the faster a magnet goes past, the more current it induces, uh, the more voltage. Um, and so it's actually easy for the drive to pick up the signal. So um, there's actually this uh, multiple bits of physics working all at the same time. Uh, that means that we should be able to get more on there. So um, I was thinking during the week about how to best uh, tell what's going on with the... Um, uh, with, uh, you know, the limits that we're getting because we were seeing that we could only drop the um, uh, the data rate divisor to 30 uh, whereas in by my calculation we should be able to get it down to at least 25 if not lower uh, and my suspected uh, reason for why that wasn't possible uh, was that we weren't doing right pre-compensation so this is the we talked about this in the last stream right uh, where magnetic pulses come early or late due to horribly complicated nonlinear physics hey LGB um, and a mock, uh, yeah, that makes it a, a pain. So then I remembered, I have 
um, the nice uh, histogram diagram that we can do in the drive. So we can step back down to track zero. So this is showing live histograms on the um, uh, the floppy uh, from on the Mega 65. And we need to step all the way down to track zero. Of course, this is a, a crocked up program, right? So this is looking pretty good. Um, we can see, so with an MFM encoded drive, there will be three different pulse durations that we expect to see. Um, 1.0, 1.5, and two times the um, uh, the base data rate. Um, what's interesting here actually is, oh, hey, Herdware, welcome along. Uh, is we can actually see the, the 1.5 one looks to be a little bit shifted towards the 1.0 one. That's a little bit uh, to the left. But overall, this is actually looking pretty good, right? Um, and if I made this so I can change the data rate that it's reading back at, uh, if we go down to 1E, I think is what I formatted this at. So this is actually, this is well above 1.44 meg capacity rate here. And we can see that those three peaks are beautifully resolved. Uh, but this is not how it always was. Right, so if I drop to data rate 1E, we can actually see that the um, there's those digits appearing on the sector list. Uh, so this is just as it's randomly looking to see what sector appears under the head, if we can read the sector header. And because the data rate is now matched, uh, we're actually getting... Uh, and reading those back. So it's reading, you know, there's 32 sectors or something that it's able to um, uh, to pick up there. In fact, possibly a little bit more. You can see the, if I, uh, blip, 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 yeah, blah, right. Uh, no, that's not what I want to do. Hang on. No, no, no. Blip, blip. Right. So now I can point to things. So there's our 1.0 uh, data rate pulse, uh, peak, our 1.5 and our 2 and up here in green is those sector numbers I was talking about uh, and then up here this is the current sector number that's being seen under the head so every time it redraws the thing it checks to see what sector most recently went under the head hey Prowl7 welcome along and welcome to all the uh, the other uh, folks who have lurked along um, great to see a number of you on there and hopefully it's good fun and interesting um, so yeah, we're getting lots of sectors on there. So now what I want to do um, is I want to be able to easily choose the parameters uh, for formatting this. Um, <laughs> I'm using an old bit stream here because uh, this is, whoops, this is, finger doesn't go on the screen, it has to go here, doesn't it? It's reading nonsense here. So I'm just gonna reload the correct bit stream. Yeah, Mega 65s just look great. Um, we're just so happy that we have this you know, the, the, phys the physical form is fantastic as well as it just being uh, stacks of fun to work with um, and someone let me know if the, the audio levels are a bit out I think uh, they should be fine but if I'm overdriving or something let me know uh, and I can drop it a notch okay Go back down to track zero. Cool. Thanks, Amok, for the uh, uh, the heads up. So I'm going to modify this program um, so that I can tell it I want to reformat uh, the track under the current head with different write precompensation settings. Uh, so this these peaks here are actually looking pretty good already because actually this is oops uh, when I was playing around with enabling re write precompensation uh, earlier. Uh, but we want to get those peaks as narrow and sharp as we can. Uh, and you can kind of see that on the, oops, <laughs> the 1.0 peak, that it's actually, it is a little bit split. Uh, at the top, we're kind of consistently getting a bit of double peaking, and there's, there's kind of hints of it on the others as well. So the, the first step is I'm going to modify that program uh, to let me uh, change, we can change the data rate. So O and P will change the data rate. Um, and I'll add some keys that will let us change the right pre-compensation value, WPC. Now we've got two values there. Um, so I'll talk about how we actually have the right pre-compensation algorithm, what I eventually figured out after reading through piles of stuff uh, and finding that it wasn't uh, particularly well uh, documented anywhere. Uh, if I go, we want to go to MFM 
bits to gaps. So this is where the right precompensation happens. Uh, so we have our two right precompensation values, the magnitude and magnitude B. Uh, and we have the, the cycles per interval. This is actually setting the, uh, the data rate. So if we come down, what we look at is the sequence of bits being written out onto the disk. So the middle bit is the current bit being written. Um, and it actually really only ever matters when that's a one because a, a one means a magnetic flux inversion and a zero means a no flux inversion. Uh, and with MFM, uh, if you have three zeros in a row, at the other end there has to be a one. So we actually don't need to compare for the one, we know it will be there. So in this case, we're comparing a gap of one time step with no flux transition to where there are three flux transitions. So with the magnetics, what it largely boils down to, I realized in the end, is a longer pulse will result in a stronger magnetic field because it kind of has more time to, to build up. Um, and a short uh, pulse will end up with this, this little magnetic field. And so the big, mean, nasty magnetic field will push uh, the point at which the head realizes that there's a little one coming uh, in the direction of the little one. So we need to make the little pulse bigger. So in this case, if we have a little followed by a big, we need to make the uh, the pulse come a bit later. This middle pulse will come a fraction of a time step to the right. Uh, and that will cause the drive to apparently read it in the right location. And some of these effects are actually happening when it's writing and some of it's actually happening when it's reading. Uh, it's all a little bit uh, crazy. And the two different values I've got. So if it's a short pulse followed by a long pulse or vice versa, we're using magnitude B because that might have a larger effect. And so this will let us have a second order uh, model. Uh, I believe some floppy controllers had fifth and hard disk controllers had fifth order models for re right precompensation to do deal with all manner of horrible, horrible, horrible effects uh, like periodic effects uh, and things that, like that are just not related to the data stream at all. Um, now, if the pulse width is equal on either side, doesn't matter whether they're short, medium or long, uh, then we don't need to do any adjust because they're equal. Uh, likewise, so here's the case where they're the shortest ones. That's fine. And then if we have a medium sized gap versus a short gap in either direction, then it will be uh, with the smaller magnitude early or late. Uh, so the algorithm in the end actually ended up being quite simple after pulling my hair out endlessly trying to, to figure out how uh, this works. It, it gets us a, a decent uh, working model for uh, for how it should be. So let's go back to our uh, floppy test program. And so that F is telling us that we're going to be able to reformat the track. And I'm actually going to uh, reformat track P equals 1. I'm actually going to have a flag variable and I'm going to move that block of code out because we're going to make it so it happens whoops uh, regardless of uh, which of those keys we've pressed so reformat track p so if that has been set then we're going to reformat it now, one thing that I haven't put in here, uh, select internal floppy drive. Because I had a problem where this, um, uh, it wasn't being uh, you know, uh, paid attention to, um, and it wasn't formatting. I was like, oh, what on earth is going on? Then I realized actually in this root, this function, uh, I hadn't actually set the flag that forces the, um, uh, the Mega 65 to use internal drive. So I just need to adjust my docking station is sitting in something it's, it's rocking around and driving me bananas no nope, i think it's just the uh, the world is not flat here or my wooden bench is warped or something who knows yeah right we're just going to live with that um, poke OXD6A1, come on, I reckon that's what it is, D6A1, because I'll do it elsewhere in this, yeah, connect to real floppy drive. Right, connect to the real floppy drive, um, tell it which track we want to format, because eventually, uh, you know, it'll do different uh, data rates and 
uh, and things on the different tracks. Uh, motor on side zero, wait for the busy flag to clear, bump the border color so we know something's happening. Tell it we want to do a format with gaps. So we're doing, uh, we're not doing Amiga style track at once at the moment, we're just doing um, sector by sector, so it'll be read write, that's fine. Um, uh, we do that, oh, actually, you know, we need to wait for that busy flag to clear again, and then here, and then we, this bit here is formatting the other side. So what we should do, is so this is a, a little bit fiddly because the floppy controller on the mega 65 have already started to teach it about right pre comp so when you set the data rate um it sets the right pre compensation but that's okay because we can set the right pre compensation after uh, reformat track p equals one so if we change the data rate we want to do it um and let's add I might use oh because I've got a bunch of keys that I'm already using for weird stuff in here right um, so that's O and P we'll use I think you and I don't do anything so 55 okay so x 75 so we will drop the primary re, uh, right precompensation. Whoops. Value there. Ah. I'm busy pressing the wrong keys. Right, so that's that. And then we want I OX 49, case OX 69. Um, we'll add one. And then we need much the same for D6A7 with some other keys. Uh, I think T and Y are fine. So I'm just going to work my way across the keyboard, right? Uh, T U V W X Y four five six seven eight nine. I can never remember um, Y and hex for some reason. I guess I just don't go down that end of the alphabet often enough. Uh, and now we need an flag variable unsigned char reformat track P is equal to zero. And then when we reformat it, we need to clear that flag so we don't just do it endlessly. Reformat track p equals zero so in theory this will let us change the parameters and we'll actually see the histogram within a second showing us what we've actually done uh, so that's going to be pretty cool if that works uh, so we want to go back to uh, we want to see that hopefully oh hang on i've got duplicate case label five, line 529 Oh, apparently. Oh, <coughs> yes, that would be a duplicate case label. That would be a. a stupid and then line 603. So I think we've got mismatched braces or something happening here somewhere. You're being very quiet at the moment. Look, I thought I'd made this so that it actually seeks back to track zero byte itself, but apparently not. Um, where's my mouse cursor gone? There it is. 
<laughs> Eddie the Magic Knot says, be careful what you wish for. Um, right. So I was just trying to see if there's a way I can get this to... So I still, because I'm on Linux, I can't run the desktop version of, uh, of the Twitch app, uh, which is a pain in the bum. Right. So I've just pressed F for format at data rate 51. So this is a double density uh, standard format. And we can see then that it's, uh, you can read uh, 11 sectors actually it's getting. And we can see that there's massive gap between these peaks, right? Because the, the time step uh, is really high and probably the right pre-compensation is irrelevant uh, and hmm, that should have why is it oh there we go so I can change that one so we can effectively turn off the right pre-compensation uh, and we shouldn't see much difference in the um, uh, the signal here Although it's interesting, so even at the data double density rate, my gut feeling is that that's probably about the narrowest peaks, but there's still kind of, there's hints of double peaking happening in there. Um, I'm actually going to modify, because I'm formatting both sides of the disk, right? And so this is uh, an unnecessary waste of time in terms of getting faster response uh, to what we're seeing here so I'm going to go hash if zero hash end if was trying to seek then I'm just going to try and fix that because it's a pain having to do the um, the thing every time so this should be seek to track zero but first what we need to do for that to work reliably we need to turn off track auto seek because I reckon that's what's happening um, d6a6 is it Right, so that's is it D6A9 D6A9 Disable auto seek Yep So that should let it automatically seek down to track 0 Less bad. Cool. So now we can you can see with the, the border color change that I can get uh, an update to the parameters pretty quickly. And okay, so Y is working for the and T is working for that one, yeah. Okay, yep, right. So now we totally can. And so you probably, I reckon, to me it's visible that I can see double peaking happening uh, with that. So um, I'm going to try the coefficient. I've got coefficients around the wrong way. Maybe that's what I'm doing. So increasing that a lot is not helpful. Let's go back and increase this one. Let's see if that doesn't. No, probably having both set to the same value. So if having the extra parameter in the model doesn't make sense, then setting them to the same value will. Um, whoops. The 
not make a difference. Okay, just give me a second. My son's just got up. Back to it. Right. So we're trying to see if we can get rid of the double peaking here. Get an idea what the um, the values should be. I reckon that's Closer now. Um, the other way of thinking about this is to look at how wide the base of the um, the pulses are, and see whether we're able to uh, to make those narrower. Of course, at this data rate, it's somewhat irrelevant, right? In that the gap between them is so massive. Um, so, you know, <laughs> DD data rate on a um, uh, high density drive is not going to be a problem. So let's go down to you know, why is it jumping back? Am I formatting the wrong side and we've just been looking at the wrong data the whole way through. We might well be. <laughs> Let me... That would be why we weren't seeing any effect. Um, and the side numbers are reversed on the 1581. Um, or rather on the, the, the C65 floppy controller. So we do... poke that and... What, what on earth am I doing there? We mark the sector. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Indeed, head where it is not at all confusing and hasn't caused me endless grief in the past either. No. Um, okay, let's just try that and see whether that because we should see. Yes, right. So now we can wind the, um, the speed up and we see the pulses all coming to the left and they'll get slowly closer to each other. Get myself more comfortable here again. Right, so 2.8 is standard HD uh, data rate. And you'll also see that the the uh, right precompensation values are changing as we go along because I kind of I put a default algorithm of saying that the um, uh, the smaller of the two coefficients should be one sixteenth, uh, and the larger coefficient should be one eighth of one time step, um, which we can actually see is is actually not working too badly. Uh, and so now, if we turn off the right precompensation. 
it's still not at this data rate it's still not a whoops <laughs> ff um, it's still not a big problem um, and actually just to convince ourselves that it's it is still working if i make this really high it should go bad so which it's not so i need to check there's a um hey dr falcon um there's a flag that you have to set on the floppy controller to enable right pre-compensation um so i need to check that i'm actually setting that because i think i'm not um and of course it, at the moment it, it survives reboots and things so i probably set it once at some point and then gone well that's all fine and now that i've restarted and loaded things up it's uh, it, it's not um so when we do the reformat we will say enable right pre-compensation and I have to remember as D6 pre-comp enable oops right pre-comp there's the magnitudes oh that's right yes so I changed the way things work a little bit. Um, so bit two, I've actually made it more compatible with the C65 again. Uh, that on the C65, it's a floppy controller, setting bit two when you give it a command tells it to enable re, uh, write pre-compensation. So I am doing, so th this is incorrectly labeled here, right? So. A4 means with pre-comp A0 me is without pre-comp and we have a separate flag now in a different register that sets whether we're doing uh, a track with gaps um, between sectors like a 1581 or without like an Amiga right so let's load that up again and now hopefully we'll see a difference Okay, now we're on track zero, right. Format. Ha ha! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> uh, so this is an example of really bad write pre-compensation. Um, we're seeing the peaks are now thoroughly split out. Um, and as I wind this back, we are seeing them come back into being single pulses yay which is good now as we wind this back in again we're going to see the uh, the divergent pulses initially uh, because again I've got that default right pre-compensation in there so we'll come back to uh, 2 8 which is standard 1.44 meg data rate And again, so this is with my guess, my best guess at default right pre-compensation. So that the peaks are looking pretty nice and we've got still pretty clear gap between the, um, the peaks. So let's turn off the right pre-compensation and we're supposed to be seeing a difference. But again, at this data rate, it may not be such a big problem. Uh, so let's come back to so this is the highest data rate that i was previously able uh, to read and write sectors i'm going to going to turn off the right pre-compensation and now we can actually see a pretty clear difference we can see that the uh if i uh <laughs> Right, so I can point again. So you look at this first peak in particular, uh, and we can see that there, it really does have, there's a central peak and there is an early peak and a late peak uh, around it. And this one here is the middle one's also looking pretty bad and that third one is also showing signs of the same thing. So 
um, if we slowly increase the right pre-comp yeah so that's so that one's making the most difference oops let's try that parameter until we get the nicest sharpest peaks I reckon that's one too far because it because once it's too narrow it'll actually start diverging again like we can kind of we're already seeing the the double peaks coming out there so that's looking pretty decent let's try the other parameter and make sure that that's not able to be Um, that's quite fascinating the way that we're seeing sudden changes. Um, I presume that maybe, well, there could be something funny in the drive electronics uh, that's affecting that. Um, or it could be horrible bugs in my program. That would be a possibility as well. You can see that too much on that primary value now is splitting out that third peak. And we're actually also seeing that the um, the gap here between the 1.0 and 1.5 is getting smaller. So this is bad for us as well. Um, so where does it seem to be? Let's see, that's got split peaks again. It's quite funny how that suddenly, at that value, and only at, oh, look at that. Fascinating. Um, I'm sure whatever that effect is, is bad. So that's not looking too bad. trying to yeah I think we're still gonna get some double peaking because there are other effects going on here um, but that's not looking too bad right um, and um, I have to step tracks to make it restart doing the uh, the sector scan but it's funny that and again because it's only updating the um, the display periodically it's only showing the uh, the things periodically uh, like discovering a new sector and it's a, it, it is random chance so the last few will take longer to find um but that's looking pretty pretty good right so i'm just going to make a note here right so at rate 20 um we have 0408 as our pre-comp seems to be reasonable now what i'm going to do is if we step forward through the disk um, and the tracks get shorter. So if I step a long way through, we're gonna start getting to tracks where this data rate might be a problem and where we may need to adjust the thing. So here, so to me, this is looking less resolved uh, and we do have more of a double peak happening there. So what happens if we is that getting better or not? Probably not. And I think you know the track that we're on now is probably whoops going to be 
marginal for the um, okay it's getting closer to marginality for the um, the data rate so the, the rubbish we're seeing here in between is because these tracks were formatted at all manner of crazy other rates and things that I was doing before. So this is classic uh, before I formatted it with the uh, the uh, the triple peaks from the lack of um, pre-compensation. We formatted out and now it's looking great. So let's yeah, see now that's looking decidedly softer um, so we're now really getting to a track where it's going to be dodgier, right? But it's nice because we can visually see the point at which uh, you know this kind of thing is happening. Uh, we could try again to clean that up. But it's really not having much effect now because we are limited... Oops. Um, we're limited by the um, uh, the flux density and the fact that the disk is spinning slower. So there's all of these things that are going to make it harder for the um, the drive electronics. Um, Herdware says, I thought it was always backwards that track started from the outside. No, so they do start from the outside. So the track zero is your longest track, which is going to be your best performing track. Uh, but that may differ on different drive types. But I think it's the same on the 1541, right? Because track 1 is the one that has the most sectors and track 35 has the least. Right, this is track 84, by the way. And with the right pre-compensation, like it's still not quite right at that full data rate, but um, it's not bad it's probably enough to work so again we're talking at normal 1.44 data rate but you can see how the difference in uh, performance between uh, the different tracks actually uh, works and so we can again let's if I turn off the right pre-compensation totally So we can see that the, the difference between a 1.0 and a 1.5 gap on track 84 on a high density disk without right pre-compensation is really marginal. Um, it probably works, but only just. So by adding in the first order right pre-comp, we've cleaned it up somewhat. Uh, by adding in the second order to match it uh, that's got better again and is it yeah see on this track having the primary right pre-comp higher actually seems to be better like the the this gap down here between the 1.0 and 1.5s uh, is actually quite a bit better. So let's come all the way back down to track zero and let's see how high we can push this data rate up. So as I said before, with no right pre-comp, um, I wasn't able to reliably read back any number of sectors on, uh, on any track, in fact. Okay, so we're going to, what did we say, that, about that seemed to be pretty good. Right, let's drop the data rate. That still looks nice and resolved, and if we, I'm going to make it, uh, I'll make it so it manually clears that list of sectors numbers um, when we do a reformat where do I display it sect colon isn't it print the list of 
sector zero it out okay right if that Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we can just copy and paste that. Down every time we do a reformat, we're going to redraw that as well. So then we get to see what sectors it's really able to uh, to read at that point. I do need to try and figure out why I still have to manually seek down. Okay, now we're on track zero. And if we have it right. Yep, so now we can change our parameters and it clears the list of sectors and it's come back down to I think the other interesting thing this shows is that the answer to the age-old question, um, hey DJ um, DFED, welcome along, um, is that using high-density media formatted to 720K should give you very, very robust behavior, right? Um, so let's come down to, right, so that's the fastest rate that we had before. Again, it's a little bit annoying that the, um, just the random periodicity of how long it's taken to draw the frame together with the um, uh, where the head's moving is it's taking a long time to kind of uh, pick up the sectors but if we now drop to a rate that we couldn't do we should actually break that periodicity a little bit so now we're seeing more of them get picked up And again, it, the last two will take a, a while to, to fill in because it's random as to when it picks them up. But clearly that's working. Um, and the only question is whether we can improve those peaks uh, any further. And it, it looks like a, uh, a pre-compensation of four, uh, which is about 100 nanoseconds because that's in cycles at 40 megahertz um, so about 25 nanoseconds a piece uh, four of them so we're talking about 100 nanoseconds roughly of uh, uh, correction and it doesn't seem to matter which combination that you know we're not bringing the peaks in any further by um, having two different magnitudes so that's an interesting piece to note as well uh, so already even with again it's defaulting to these funny um, uh, pre-comp values and it, it is clearly improved uh, as we uh, bring that back up to 4 and 4 uh, let's see whether 5 and 5 looks any better maybe So I reckon at this data rate, the secondary one might be making more of a difference. And again, it's a difference between the 1.0 and the 1.5s that is the, um, the big problem. Yeah. Uh, looks to me like there's a um, hmm. 
maybe about eight works better. But again, it, it's now splitting the, um, oops, the, um, the 2.01. So I still reckon about four, eight is best there. And again, we've got this annoying periodicity, so it's only picking up some of the sectors, but that's all right. We will drop the data rate again. We will re-bring up our right pre-comp. And that's looking pretty decent to me. So how low can we go? So this is interesting. So this is, um, wait, if I, I'm just going to turn off the pre-comp completely for a moment. And we can see that we still are getting some sector headers, but it's not picking up many of them. Um, again, because we're now getting the, much more of the uh, the corruption happening in there. And as I start bringing up the pre-comp, we start getting many more of them, but we can actually see it at this rate. So this is 1A um, instead of 20. So it's going to be 32 over 26. Um, of the um, the rate that we were looking at. So the, if I just reset for a moment, right? So the 1.44 meg floppy rate is 40, which is equal to 28 hex, right? Um, and that works on track 79, like it's designed to work on track 79. Um, so track oops, zero is 1.44 six times longer. So 40 divided by 1.6 is equal to um, 25, right? I'm pretty sure. Print 40 divided by 1.6. Yep, 25. So in theory, we should be able to get that data rate down um, to 25 which is equal to one nine in hex. That's what we're expecting. Should be resolvable on track zero um, without abusing the, um, uh, you know, the media, you know, we're not requiring the media to actually be any uh, better quality than normal. Now, whether the drive mechanics uh, and electronics can tolerate it, that's a separate thing. So back down to track zero. We get our data rate down to one nine. <laughs> Heard we were saying, do you live in the future? Basic date is 12th of September, um, 2021. Clearly my real time clock has run a bit fast. Because uh, even here in Australia, it's still only the morning of the 11th. Right, so this data rate should be possible um, if we get the right pre-compensation right. but I don't think the drive is oops, quite up to it. Because we can see that that's quite, quite distorted.
we are seeing a little bit of help bring that in but I think even 1a is a bit wonky um, uh, DJ Defed says but isn't it like last Thursday in Hong Kong <coughs> uh, I think you might need to check your calendar uh, Dr. Vulcan says uh, present past and future on earth is all rather arbitrary isn't it indeed what, what's the difference in longitude between friends um, and <coughs> serious limbs uh, data so you can actually um, relive that stream moment live again when it's uploaded on YouTube. Yeah, that's right. Indeed, we, we, we're doing a pre-record so it can be live later. Exactly. That that sounds totally plausible or something. Um, right. So one A to me looks a bit dodgy as well. Let's go have a look at one B. So what I'm aiming to do now really is to see what's the best data rate that we can do that really does have clearly resolved uh, peaks. So that's interesting, right? So this is data rate uh, 1B. Yeah, so yeah, Akinfin says, yeah, you ran this pre-recorded video a day too early. Exactly. You don't know how hard it was to anticipate what you guys were going to say, so I could read the comments out in advance as well. Um, so you, you have to you have to cut me some slack on that one. Um, so that's interesting. So one rate one B uh, with uh, eight and eight actually is working pretty well. In that we do have three fully resolved lumps. Um, now, whether the phase lock loop carry on is going to still handle that correctly, I'm not entirely convinced. One C is is looking like this to me is is looking much better, right? And I'm conscious that as I'm putting the the right pre comp primary thing up, that the um, uh, this third peak on the right was getting wider, uh, and that is going to cause problems as well. Because if it gets too wide, then we're going to to misinterpret it as something else. Um, so it's interesting as well it, it, this almost actually basically says that if we have a middle size gap we should just make it later regardless uh, because we're seeing that uh, you know uh, unequal gap in there but you know I reckon to me so rate 1c with 0408 looks to be pretty good so what I'm going to do in fact is when we do our reformat when I get the cursor in the correct window that will help as well um, if we change the data rate I'm actually going to set d6a 6 comma oxo 4 and 7 to 08 and we need to do that for when we decrease the data rate as well and where's my plus and minus there's plus and minus I'm going to make it so that as I step through tracks, it's actually going to reformat as well for me. Uh, and again, that it's going to keep this particular value. Like whatever data rate we set. Um, so I'm actually going to set the 
So you can see now as I change the data rate, the uh, the right pre-comp uh, is staying uh, statically there. So we'll bring that down to 1C. We can see we're actually not on track zero here, right? We're, we're some way further out. We can actually see that we already have a problem in that the uh, the 1.0 and 1.5 gap peak is not resolving as well. And as we step down the tracks, we're going to see this improve. Right, so we're on track zero now because the drive's not, not stepping. Yep, so that looks okay. Track one looks okay at that rate. Track two looks okay. Track three. Track four. Track five. Oh no. Folks on Discord are busy chatting about floppy stuff at the moment. Um, which it might be worth us jumping in on a bit. Where were they chatting about that? Compatibility? Yeah, I'm going to... I think they're talking more about 1541 disks and things. That's right, if someone who's on there... Oh, okay, Dr. Falcon, I had a long question about GCR and 3.5 inch internal drive. Uh, the short answer is yes, I believe that you could do GCR on the internal 3.5 inch drive. Um, the slightly longer answer is uh, I don't think there's any point in doing it. GCR gets you no better density than MFM. Um, what I am going to look at once we've got all of this under control uh, is that we're going to have um, ah, mental blank um, RLL encoding uh, on there. Ah, for copy protection, right. You can already do horrors of copy protection with MFM with variable data rate, I assure you. Um, your opportunities for uh, being mean are quite unlimited. I and mean, you can see with the, these funny effects that right pre-compensation is, uh, is already having as well. Um, so yeah, uh, Dr. Vulcan is saying, I'd hope to be able to image original games, including copy protection, weak bits uh, to three and a half inch floppies. Ah, okay, so as, in, as if you had a 1541 disc and you now want to put it onto a three and a half inch media, uh, but fully replicated uh, down to the flux level. Is that what you're aiming for, Dr. Vulcan? Okay, yeah, so using effectively cryoflux to stream from five and a quarter to three and a half. So you probably mostly could, but remember that the right pre-compensation stuff will be different between the two things. Uh, that said, the 1541 pulse rate is so low um, that you can probably ignore right pre-compensation uh, and just copy the flux uh, inversions. So it is in my uh, you know, my longer term list that we'll actually be able to plug a five and a quarter inch drive into the Mega 65 on the internal floppy connector cable uh, and have that map to a, um, uh, you know, a virtual 1541 um, that's already kind of half implemented actually in the Mega 65 uh, so that you'll be able to use real media uh, you know, as a, uh, an included 1541, so you won't have to have the whole separate big disk drive hanging around. Um, so in that kind of context, you kind of, what you're saying, you almost you almost don't need because you can just use a five and a quarter inch media natively. Um, but if you decide on the three and a half inch media because it's, it is, you know, the tolerance for the data is gonna be way, 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 way better, uh, that it might be uh, fine. So yeah, uh, but anyway, let's, keep going through and see at what point this really starts to break down. So this is getting, you know, that gap between the 1.0 and the 1.5 gaps is getting smaller. And eventually it will get too small to be reliable. 
So what we can actually do pretty soon, um, now that we've worked out that a write precomp of four and eight fixed uh, is basically good. Uh, and again, if we just do a bit of a test to see if changing any of those makes it better or worse at this point. Yeah, see so on that track, six looks better, but again, I think the, it's just random variation. So I think four and eight is probably still uh, about right. So we can go back to our um, where's my ah that's not what I wanted to do I wanted to do this right we have a floppy capacity program uh, we set that poke oxd six a six o four poke OX D six A seven comma O eight O eight um set sensible write pre comp defaults Yeah. Uh now is that further Yeah. Yeah, so Dr. Vulcan is just chatter going back on Discord. So he didn't want to disturb his stream, he was going to wait until the end, uh, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, honestly, in, in the streams, I think it's actually, it's really interesting for everyone. If you ask the questions as we're going along, um, it's, it's really good and I certainly welcome it. So, um, and I'll, I'll tell you as if uh, I don't want to answer, but yeah, that's not a drama. Um, we've got 17 uh, watching at the moment. So welcome along to the extra lurkers who've come along. I reckon that's the, the most we've had so far in the, the short history of these streams. Uh, now we need to have a look at the format single track side routine and again we need to change this it's not with gaps the gaps we need to handle separately uh, it's actually with write precompensation dollar a4 equals format with write precompensation and then the gap enabling was format no gaps if I got the two tied together it's possible that I have and that I'm a complete ah I have because I've screwed that up right that should be that um, while I'm here let's set the magnitudes we're not going to automatically change the right pre-comp when we set the data rate anymore we are just going to set them to sensible values because we now know that sensible values effectively exist <laughs> DJ Defed is uh, saying you're going to get to the point where your data is so tightly packed that it collapses when we observe it by loading it exactly that's right load once data quantum copy protection um, yeah loads of fun stuff uh, so let's I'll set that synthesizing in the background look a bit oh, hang on, git commit dash a uh, fix no gaps bit select um, set default uh, right pre comp bug 438 mc bit mega 65 r3 okay right so these are all going to be um without gaps until that's finished synthesizing right because it's 
um, the bit three equals no gaps, i.e. Amiga style track at once. Okay, so we should be able to run our um, floppy capacity program again. Oh, and I've set it to default to track 82 to begin with for the moment, which is uh, crazy. <laughs> but it's interesting note that we're getting 29 sectors consistently on uh, track 82. Those who watched last time would know that we couldn't get that many. Um, so we want to start at a bit interval. We said... Well, I'm going to start at 25, right? Um, go to a bit interval of 40, because there's no point going any higher than that. And we want to start at track 0. Right. And we need sectors by rate. OK, yep, so that, that should all be within acceptable parameter was now why is that complaining and saying that it can't get any sectors on track zero because how am I testing this right Starting with a low bit interval, we go into a high bit interval. We write it back. We try and read back sectors. Something screwy. Let's. See what we're doing here because I reckon it's at that rate I have ah yes I haven't got the the thing set so it's utterly confusing itself saying it successfully read all zero sectors at that rate um so um yes yeah, right Akimafin best of luck to all the pirates wanting to pirate the 2.5 meg mega 65 floppies um more the point wait until we get the you know the the nearly four megabyte ones with RLL encoding um. And yeah, the Amiga won't, can't, uh, because the Paula doesn't do uh, the double data rate either. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Vulcan. Um, yeah, sorry, the 45 terabyte LTO9 tape media just announced. In other news, Mega 65 Paul fits 4 megabytes on a 1.44 meg 3.5 inch floppy disk. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know enough about the ST's floppy controller. I think it has a dumb PC style controller. So yes, you, you're probably safe, Acmafin. Um, that the Amiga would have a better chance, but it will still fail unless you have an Amiga half spin rate high density floppy drive. Then you might be in with a chance. But even then, I think that the our maximum data rates are actually just too high. Uh, because again, the, the Paula can't change the data rate that it's doing to the disks. Um, so let's just make up some arbitrary numbers here right so we know that we're starting from 25 um 20 21 22 23 24 25 so 25 we're just going to lie and say we should get 40 sectors on each one um and we'll see what we actually get why is it trying to read 50 back Reading back sector count. Sector count. Oh, yes, okay, because we... Yes, so we try, in theory, to read 50 sectors back. Um, mm. 
Okay, uh, let me go back to the rate here. Yeah, Akafin says you can put four megabytes in, but can you take it out reliably? Yeah, I, re I reckon this. We'll see whether I quite get to four meg, um, but I think three megabytes is actually uh, pretty reasonable. Um, so we know that 28 should work because that's what we were looking at before that seemed to do things so that this the the top left of the screen you can see that there's the uh, uh, the funny spinny thing um, that's showing the sector numbers uh, that are passing under the head um, so it's reading something um, now whether it's then getting uh, bad CRCs something like that because um, it's busy claiming it can't read any of them right um, oh yeah you can't begin to <laughs> yes an experienced operator uh, would have noticed this um, so yeah, you can see above the capital T there's that little spinny thing um, and oops uh, can I make this chat window bigger that would be really helpful I can make it slightly bigger um, retro combs uh, says good stuff Paul while I don't understand half the words coming out of your mouth I at least understand what you're trying to accomplish and the conversation with uh, dr. Vulcan was interesting uh, can't wait uh, oh, stupid pause thing in the way uh, can't wait to see how much more you can squeeze out of these things yeah um, yeah Aquafin's asking with his old 1990 Amiga double-sided double density discs do uh, we can we can try a double density disc I've got some lurking around here we can see just how badly they handle this um, newer DD discs are probably HD media inside anyway and it was just marketing difference older ones were definitely different though um, so yeah, <laughs> Ackman Finch is the reason that retrochromes can't understand half the words coming out of my mouth is the Australian accent. Um, I can switch to German if you want to be utterly uh, you know, confused then for half of you as well, if you like. Um, so anyway, uh, let's, I'm going to drop the data rate back to the pedestrian 40, right? Because 40... Uh, should work yeah and Akmafin says oh my god if you speak in German then we won't understand 98 words uh, percent of the words out of your mouth yeah and remember to be German with an Australian accent so yeah forget trying to understand Bavarians right uh, you'll be uh, having an entertaining time although actually hopefully these days my German is not so shocking okay so data rate 40 has worked right so let's work our way back down then. So we know 32 was working before. So we'll try 32. Yep, and again, we get these funny, uh, you know, the uh, it's having to go an entire revolution around uh, with these things and so again this is with it uh, without gaps right so we're getting 29 sectors per track that way um, so let's go down to 30 let's just we'll just go to 31 so it's one data rate faster and so this was not working on uh, without a right pre-comp and you probably want to see the screen um, hey light on 23 um, yeah, it is morning uh, here, and yeah, glad that to be able to jump along and, and catch the, the stream as well. Now, what have I stuffed up there? I think that's just M65 random crash with the load. Right, okay, so data rate 31 has worked so this is good and that gets us an extra sector per track that makes me happy so 
And Light on 23 says, yes, it's nearly midnight here in Germany. Yes, and it's a refreshing 7 a.m. here in Adelaide. Um, so, yes, let me go. So that data rate is working. 30, let's just wind this down one at a time until it doesn't work. Uh, Retrochrome says, at some point I'd like your setup using Emacs to connect to the Mega 65. Is it documented anywhere? Uh, understand your setup, uh, he says. So uh, I'm actually, so Emacs isn't doing the integration itself. The integration is actually through um, make files on the command line. Uh, so if I, I'll show you what I actually do to, um, to do this. Um, brrp, right. So if I was all like modern and stuff, I would use a, uh, a more integrated uh, you know, process, uh, but <laughs> uh, I'm not and I don't at the moment. So I literally run make to compile the program. Uh, the double ampersand basically says if that fails don't continue uh, and then m65-f to reset the mega 65-4 to switch to c64 mode because my program is just using a c64 mode loader dash r run it after you've loaded it and this is the program to load uh, and so that sets it running uh, which is good cool okay so we are down to the next data rate and that's working for us and we're reading all 31 sectors on the track um, Let's go down to 29. So we're already into previously uncharted territory of having a, um, uh, we've got two more sectors per track than we were previously able to extract out of this. So we can get 32. And actually what I should do as well is uh, we can update that table of how many sectors we should be able to get. 29, 30, 32. So I've tried, I think I switched that back to 28, didn't I, as well to, yeah, I did. So data rate 28 seems to be where it falls over. Or rather, it's data rate divisor 28. Yeah, I convinced it's one way floppy encryptor. Yes. Yeah, and Lighten 23, you're absolutely right. I could hook the make files to an Emacs shortcut. Twenty nine gets thirty two. So I need to make sure I have that table correct because it's still not correct. That should have jolly well been. Hang on. Yes, right. Okay, I'm a deal. Um, so that's 30. Uh, and we're doing without gaps, right? 31. Yeah, here we are. So this is where I need to fix it. Um, so we get 32 at 29. Um, and it might be that this will magically fix that so we're doing gaps oops not claps gaps uh, with gaps is set to zero so yep that's all good and fine okay let's so what I'm trying to do now is when my automatic 
tester of all numbers of possible sectors on the tracks at the different data rates on each track um, working and knowing that it's doing it correctly yeah so now it's reading 32 sectors from that track and going yes I can get 32 sectors on that track Uh, so for reference, so a PC 1.44 meg floppy gets 20 sectors per track side. Um, so we are getting 1.6 times as many, uh, but we are actually having to, to leave the, the gaps out because for, we can't get the, um, the fidelity down. And I think it's drive electronics is actually our limit. Yeah. Um, so from 20 to, to 32 sectors, we've got over 50% boost. And if we get RLL working, that gets us another 50% on top of that, right? Uh, so it would be uh, 20 times uh, 1.5 times 1.5. More the point, it's 32 times 1.5, so we should be able to get 48 sectors per track with RLL 2, 7 um, on track zero, right? Uh, and so what we will actually see uh, is that the um, as we get higher tracks, we we'll start to get failures with this. So far, so good. And actually, interestingly, because the now that we have the right pre-compensation and that we're using a data rate that's lower than the maximum, we should get 32 sectors per track over a surprisingly large fraction of the disk, is my hope. So now it's, it's the suspense to see how many tracks we can get uh, at these kind of data rates. So, so while that's chugging along, um, if anyone has any other questions and things, I'm quite happy to talk to those while we just let this chug away. Uh, it doesn't have to be about the floppy stuff. It can be about anything mega 65 e. Um, so while you're thinking about that, one th so again, I think everyone knows that the pre-order opening allegedly, hopefully, should be happening in the next, within the next week. Uh, I think possibly even, uh, yeah, you know, Wednesday. I think maybe. So don't quote me gospel, uh, but you certainly want to keep an eye out uh, for that. So Herbie is saying, imagine just how exciting this would have been in 1986. Um, to fit more on. Yes, it's, actually, it's been really interesting as I've kind of been looking at all of this and thinking how hard would it have been to make a PC floppy controller or an Amiga floppy controller or otherwise that would have been able to get this kind of capacity out because whilst I'm using new tools and things um, to you know work out what I can do the fundamentals of the drive controller it's really just being able to vary the speed uh, of the uh, the phase lock loop in the floppy controller. As uh, so again, Kids Canadian 64 is saying, Wednesday in which time zone will be the question? That's right, is it Wednesday according to my Mega 65? In which case it was probably last week, right? Um, or is it a little bit uh, further on? So, Andy Magic Knight, can you let slip roughly the cost? I need to know how many kidneys to sell this weekend. <laughs> well, if in doubt, sell them all, right? Uh, and then, you know, order the Mega 65 uh, and leave it in your will to someone uh, that you would like to have it. Uh, and then everything is really simple, right? Uh, possibly not optimal, but simple. Um, or otherwise, I guess your, your option is you sell one kidney, uh, in which case, well, you, you just do that and hope that that covers the cost, which uh, it should. So, um, yeah, Leiden67 is saying an estimate of six to 700 euros was an earlier estimate. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Andy Magic Knight says, I don't know anyone that much. Right. Um, <laughs> leave them the kidney instead of the Mega 65, right? Um, <laughs> Dr. Falcon says, who else's kidneys do you have? Oh, yes, indeed. Kidney cell lamb kidneys are about the right size, right? Uh, you know, before the uh, the black market operatives realize. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, look, at the, the final price, uh, I, I can't say anything more uh, until uh, that comes out. Uh, you know, I'm not part, actually, of the, the final process of setting the price. So, in terms of just interesting things as to the way the, the internals work. So the because of the time zone differences and all the rest of it, uh, we've got the, the four main guys on the German side kind of looking after all of, you would not believe how much cat herding uh, and everything going on 
uh, there in the background. Uh, and so they're still, you know, trying to make sure, okay, like exactly how much does the manual cost to get printed? That depends on how many pages it's got. We're still trying to work out exactly how many pages we can squish uh, the user guide down to. Uh, so there's kind of some of these things and the packaging I think is still being finalized. Um, and so there'll be issues around the printing cost and how much the, the inserts and everything um, cost. So yeah, <laughs> Retrocomb says cat herding. Isn't that mega cat herding? It is absolutely a mega case of cat herding. Uh, I think, you know, once uh, the machines are out and in everyone's hands, there will be a very large collective sigh of relief uh, from the core team. Uh, as, you know, we all just take a bit of a, a break and go, right, oh, we, we've, you know, it's been given birth. Uh, you know, uh, the midwife has the bottle and is, uh, is feeding it for the moment. Uh, everyone can get a good night's sleep. And then, you know, we start having uh, more focus on the fun of actually doing things with the Mega 65, which you guys have already had a chance to do to some degree. Uh, more than we have, whereas like the, most of the programming I'm doing for the Mega 65, apart from the odd uh, thing, is really programs to that are needed for the operation of the machine, uh, or to test uh, various things, uh, or to uh, you know to do demonstrations and things to make sure that the um, uh, you know that people understand what the machine is capable of, like with the Mega Maze stuff, for example. Uh, so Retrocombs is saying, can you hint at megaphone timeline at all? Um, I can, so this is going to be a little bit interesting. So there's a, a uh, and again, I, I can't go into too much detail, but there's a good chance that the megaphone will move forward. Um, so the megaphone kind of has a life independent of the, um, uh, the Mega 65 insofar as a development effort. So when I was at the university, uh, we were using student effort mostly to, uh, to do that and we've had some funding support from the Internet Foundation which is fantastic uh, so that's getting the next revision of the PCB organized of course uh, you know Chippergeddon and uh, Corona and all of that kind of carry on uh, is causing us some grief uh, with that uh, but there's good hope actually that it will um, uh, progress hmm right so those who are watching the screen carefully will have noticed that we had we're getting some retries now on track 41 uh, but so tracks 0 to 40, uh, we're able to use uh, data rate uh, 29, exactly hitting the speed limit, um, uh, which is 32 sectors, no gaps. Cool. So what I'm going to do um, is I will temporarily stop it. I'll restart it from track 41 at the next slower rate so that we don't waste forever uh, uh, with it trying to uh, to do that. So I can tell it we'll do from track 40. Uh, so that's 29. So we'll go to data rate 30. We'll run it again. Oh, hit the wrong button again, didn't I? Okay, that's weird. What's balked up? So I've told it bit rate 30. We're going we've started back at track zero with that and so that's okay let me just go who knows why that jammed because again I mean, this is pretty cruddy test program right so it's possible that it stepped to the wrong track or who knows uh, so aquafin is asking questions about how reliable this uh, these higher density formats will be um, and I think it was Aquafin, oh sorry no, Dr. Volcom was asking is this new high data rate more susceptible to corruption, random bit flips from external magnetic fields etc? Look, the higher the data density the more susceptible it will be to uh, externally induced field flips uh, that's absolutely uh, going to be true. Now when the disk is sitting at rest, should it be more susceptible? It probably shouldn't 
Um, again, if, at the higher tracks, if we're using a data rate that doesn't have a higher data density than what the shortest tracks on a uh, 1.44 used, in theory, it should all be fine. Um, but uh, again, it means that some of the extra tolerance that was there is going to disappear. Uh, and Aquafin says, yes, you need to test it with at least three different floppies and then call it 100% working if it works on those. Yeah, and so those of you who have dev kits, it will actually be really helpful uh, for you to be able to run, uh, once we get it a little bit more settled down, um, I'll make a program that will try and format uh, a disk using this format, uh, and then uh, you know, read it back and see if it's reliable. And then yeah, test it with three different disks in uh, you know, Drive, have a bunch of us test it. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is a bit of a, uh, a protection against these formats being bad. Uh, and I was going to see if we would have a bit of a, a look at it today, but we may run out of time. Depends what time the family get up here. Um, is that the, um, I'm going to write on every track at the DD data rate. So at the 720K uh, data rate, um, it will write a single um, track uh, info block. So it'll be really short. Uh, it shouldn't drop the number of uh, sectors we can fit on any of the tracks. Um, but what it will do is it will actually say that this track is written at this data rate, uh, and this is the correct write precompensation to use, uh, and the number of sectors on the track, and whether it's with gaps Amiga style or whether it's without, uh, sorry, with, uh, without gaps Amiga style or with gaps 1581 style so that the track can be written sector at once. Uh, and the floppy controller will read those and automatically set itself up. Uh, so this, the really nice thing with this is that we can, that format, and if we make the disk images for this, we might call them D65 files or something probably, um, they'll pro be about six and a half meg to allow for the maximum conceivable number of sectors on every track. But we know that, in fact, they'll only be partially populated on any uh, reality, uh, but it means that we can um, start out. You know, the, the the system will be able to uh, to handle this uh, really well. Uh, and if it turns out that they're not reliable enough, we can actually turn the knobs back down progressively um, without having to change anything. So people who are making the discs will be able to do that. Uh, now, so Aquafin is saying, would you be able to read PC or Amiga discs? Um, so we can already read PC 1.44 meg floppies uh, and 720k floppies. So that was one of the an early thing that I was able to, to test and confirm uh, because we are using MFM uh, and it is basically a standard PC format just with more sectors per track. Um, now Amiga disks will have to do some extra work, um, but you could already read them. Um, writing them would be harder because we don't currently have a, a raw flux write mode. Uh, we just have a, an unbuffered format mode, but we can totally add one. And then you could do Amiga style track at once writing. Um, but you know, sorry, let me correct that. Um, so the, the standard Amiga format is gapless MFM. Um, so we can write that because that's actually what I'm doing now, right? Uh, we are formatting with gapless MFM and you can do unbuffered formatting uh, in exactly the same way. Um, so that's totally uh, doable. So yes. Um, it's only GCR that we don't yet support, um, and when I get to it, uh, you know, we will, I'm not going to worry about GCR. As I say, there's no reason to do it. Uh, but MFM, uh, sorry, um, RLL 2.7 uh, for 50% extra capacity, we're totally going to do. Um, at least see whether it's going to be feasible. Um, cool. So we're up to track 57, still with 31, and we're not missing any yet, which is great. And I think there's a, a good chance with the right precompensation that we're going to be able to uh, have 28 or 29 sectors per track out at those uh, shorter, higher numbered tracks. And then once that bitstream is built and we can actually test <laughs> with sector gaps again, um, we can see what we can get out that way. Um, but if we are saying 80, tracks times 30 sectors times two sides just as a um, a thing so that's oops two God, not 20 sides I'm just topping here into the chat window right uh, oh we had a, a missed one again did we Let me 
Oh yes, we did indeed, right? So we got to, because it only read back 26, and now we've got 30. So the last good track was track 61. So 41 to 61 was divided by 30 uh, and 31 sectors, no gaps. Let me just write this down. And I'm gonna restart it again uh, as we did last time. Track number 60, data rate 31. Track 61. So if we're able to average 30 sectors per track and, um, oh, okay, yeah, so we'll say from track 60. Okay, yep, thanks for that, um, Keith Canan. Because yeah, we want to know the, the last where it's uh, safe. And we'll probably, we'll, as I said, we will detune this a little bit um as well so 31 29 track 61 onwards okay so if we can average 29 uh, sorry 30 sectors per track um times 512 byte uh, sectors so that will get us um what's that so it's um 80 tracks times 30k so that's 2.4 or mega like as in 2400 kilobytes i think but we're going to do a little bit better than that i think um, dr hawkins says would it be possible to try what you're doing now on a five and a quarter inch pc floppy drive attached to the mega 65's internal floppy controller and have a seriously increased capacity as well absolutely absolutely um, because this is all about uh you know skullduggery uh, with the floppy drive now again the trick will be how that floppy drive will react to having non-standard pulse gaps um, that you need for these non-standard data rates so yeah um, so given that we have on three quarters of the disk actually has we can fit 31 sectors um, and the first half of the disk we fit 32 <coughs> so I think we're actually going to average 31 sectors per track so 80 tracks times 31 sectors is equal to um, 2480 kilobytes um, and if we do 85 tracks times 31 sectors uh, and I'll come back to a question about the Alps drives that someone asked before which I'll mention back in a moment so 85 times 31 2635 kilobytes uh, and again call out if you see it uh, slowing down again we're getting near the end of the disk now so it won't take too much longer anyway now will this work on non alps drives uh, who was it that asked that question this is a very good question uh, kith canan 64 will out this be Alps specific or are you trying to maintain compatibility with other dev kit drives so at the moment i'm just trying to on the on the alps drives because if it doesn't work on the alps drives we just won't do it right uh, because then it won't work in the production machines. Uh, so, uh, no, so it's not slowing down here. Now it's actually, so you know if it's slowed down because it, it will be much slower. And um, we're starting because the, the data rate is quite high. Um, well, they may have. I'm actually probably willing to concede that I think that this track and maybe from 75 it has slowed down. Um, so it's taking multiple rotations to read the sectors. Um, but you can get funny things, right? So that's that. So we'll say track 75, I think was the first one that slowed down. Does that make sense for folks or was it 74? Yeah, 76 is definitely slow. So let me. Uh, So a bit rate of 32 and from track 75. Cool. So we'll do the exact calculation of how much this is fitting for us. 
uh, once those last few tracks have gone through. Um, yeah, so the we will need to test it on other floppy drives. I do have a, a pile of other floppy drives in the shed uh, that I can go and uh, connect to the Mega 65 at some point. Again, those of you with dev kits uh, will be really helpful uh, to uh, test a bunch of these things uh, and see how it goes. But as I say, I'll try and get it you know, firmed up into something which is a, a little bit saner uh, and easier to uh, to work with rather than having to recompile and fiddle and carry on all the time. Oh, Leiden23 saying, got to the party too late, no dev kit here. Yeah, but remember, hopefully in the coming week you'll be able to... Uh, uh, to pre-order a final production machine uh, and what i've seen so far of you know the, the nice ring you know, spiral bound printed manuals the uh the packaging and everything uh you know all of that is going to be really 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 good so yeah um or indeed enter the um uh, the competition that shalon has got so uh with there's a full production mega 65 being given away uh, as part of that as the first prize which is really really cool Okay, so we can get 29 sectors per track all the way down to the end. So the reason we can still get 29, by the way, is that data rate 32 actually still fits 29 sectors on the track. Um, so let me summarize this on the screen a bit for you. Uh, so, right. Uh, track 0 to 40 is divided by 29, which is 32 sectors per side. Track 41 to 60 was divided by 30, which is equal to, it gets us 31 sectors per side. And this is all no gaps, right? Have a quick look and see how far off that synthesis run is. It must be pretty close. Uh, hmm. Yes, I think it it will be. So we might be able to do the uh, the test with gaps soon as well. Okay, uh, and then track sixty one to seventy four. And so you actually start to see the um, the effect here that as you get nearer to the middle, the uh, the circumference is dropping off, uh, you know, more precipitously with this. Uh, so that was was it twenty nine or was it thirty? I think it was thirty, wasn't it? Let me. It's in my table, right? Ah, no, it's 29 and 29 there. Well, but uh, what? I've confused myself. So that's 10, 20. That's rate 30. So rate 30 is 31. Rate 29. So rate 31, rather, should be 30 sectors per track. Is that, I, I, I presume that's what we were getting? Um, so let me and then we had track 75 to 84 oops press yeah. and again there's still no gaps right Uh, Herder is saying the pre-order machines will be this, um, the same in regarding to packaging and all that stuff compared to the normal release. So the pre-order machines, you are pre-ordering normal machines. So absolutely, exactly. Yep, and so Sirius Limbs has, uh, has confirmed that as well. So, yes. <laughs> Aquafence's <laughs> chat gasps. 
indeed. Um, cool. So let's work out how many sectors we get from that. So we can say print 40, well, you, how many kilobytes? Because there's two sides, right? Uh, 41 tracks times 32 sectors, and there's two sides and a half a kilobyte, so that works out to uh, plain old kilobytes. It's quite convenient. Uh, and then 41 to 60, so that's 20 tracks times 31. 61 to 74, that's 14 tracks times 30, plus 10 more tracks times 29. 2642 kilobytes. 2642 kilobytes. No. Gaps. Yeah, Akron says, love you using the Mega 65 as a notepad and calculator. 8-bit machines are just great for that, right? Uh, who needs software when you've just got somewhere just to scribble on the screen that you don't want after and uh, can calculate? Um, so that's quite nice. Um, and now I want to see if that... Oh, the, okay, we, we should have a fresh bit stream now. That has the ability for us to do with gaps. Uh, gaps with gaps is equal to one. And we want to start at track zero. And we said 29 was our best data rate. Let's see how this goes, or whether I've completely rudgered something up. Uh, let's try and reduce the speed to a point where we know that it's all totally fine. Hmm, maybe I've barked something here. Yeah, Dr. Vulcan says best marketing equals real world usage. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Lydon23 uh, says, I don't think I'll manage a game until uh, before December. Uh, just going through the manual and trying to understand the advanced features. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely, yeah, and fixing stuff in the manual on the way. And that's actually super helpful. Having people uh, proofread and everything to make the manual and everything as absolutely polished and lovely as, uh, as we can. Uh, it's you know the, the whole Mega 65 thing is a labor of love. It's not designed to be economically sensible or anything, uh, and it depends on so many people putting in uh, so much, uh, you know, uh, loving effort to make it already what it is and uh, what it will be. Uh, you, you look at the uh, you know the the kart racer game that Shallon's making, right? Uh, it's also a great example of this on the software side. Uh, Ah, okay, so Kitkin said, what was the total without gaps capacity? Um, 2642 kilobytes, 2642 kilobytes without gaps. Yeah. Yeah, Akron Finn says, why not replicate the Commodore way of doing things equals as cheap as possible? Well, uh, we have. We've worked out the cheapest way possible to make a machine that is absolutely gorgeous and will last for the next 40 years. Uh, and, yeah, it's just really, really, really nice. So, yes. Yeah, London that's right. <laughs> the game not related to any Italian plumber. Uh, it won't be in the end. It temporarily uh, has Italian plumber themed graphics. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure whether he's found an artist who's going to make some new maps yet or whether he was looking for one. Um, yeah. Uh, Dr. Vulcan says, can I uh, proofread the manual and make corrections using Git? Absolutely. You can make pull requests with corrections to the manual. Uh, that would be fantastic uh, to go through and do that. So now I have to try and figure out why on earth this is now refusing to format. Uh, I'm going to tell it without gaps again uh, and just see whether I've balked something. <laughs> hmm. um, I'm going to run the floppy test program again and see if we're actually writing sensible things to the um, 
little bit floppy. Yes, yeah, so Sirius Limbs is a good point. Um, it's saying to Dr. Vulcan, make sure to check with BitShifter in the Discord channel manual to see the latest updates and things that are being worked on. Absolutely. Um, Huda is saying, did you load the new Bitstream? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, so I loaded that just using the M65 command off screen. Let's get back down to track zero. Okay, we're on track zero and it is indeed reading things. Let's get down to 28, which is standard 1.44 density. That's all looking fine. Okay. So that's at 39. And again, we get these periodicity things that make it a, a pain to check. Let's go down further. And it's nice, again, we can see that the peaks are, are really nice and resolved here still, which is great. So that's at 32. seeing sectors and there's no reason to believe that it would be having trouble at that and again I think we've got a there's a periodicity thing happening here right you can basically see it um, in there so if we go one slower we'll see that they all get picked up in fact if we go one faster even though that it'll not get all of them uh, we can see that yeah, that's picking up. Right, so that should be working. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I just need to stretch my back. Um, it's one problem with doing these streams in the morning. Um, oh, I'm not any younger. So if I get straight up and then sit in the chair for a while, my back tries to seize up on me a little bit. So it's normally fine on work days because I ride my bike and that just the, you know the pumping of the legs moves everything around enough to uh, to make it happy um okay let's have a look here then get our floppy capacity program back up and running and yes that's magically working again So there's something funny that we are setting that causes grief, I think. So I'm going to go back to 28. Now this is... No. Yeah, which sector numbers is it trying to read? So with gaps, we will expect a lower number. So 28 is always supporting, so I can get rid of the sector counts for less than that. is just weird oh no that's right we, we, 29 was the first one that worked wasn't it uh, yep right 29 
there's no reason why that shouldn't be working because um, this is now fundamentally what we had before um, let me check Oops. yep so our right pre-compensation is 04 and 08 um, that's all fine and we enable it with the format command that we do which we'll just double check that that's all format single track side and so we're either doing it with caps or without caps let's just tell it with gaps and see if this is sorting it out yeah like um, 23 says try yoga a few yeah zonen uh in the morning helps a lot so yes the uh, i do know that uh yoga move it's the um sun salutations i think is the standard english yoga name uh for it and why is that data rate magically not working now let's just temporarily give up and say we want data rate 30 okay we'll go 32 because i reckon we saw that working just before just trying to figure out what this instability in the program is because um, we're seeing the, the spinny thing at the top right that it's finding the sector headers um, so the only question is whether the sector bodies are, um, uh, are balked perhaps see that should work um, let's just go standard 1.44 data density Yeah, so right, so that's working just fine and dandy. Um, is it, let me just double check that we're not inadvertently turning off. Uh, so it's F00 pre, what was it, pre comp. Oops, F011 right pre comp. Okay, so we're setting that to bit two of whatever is in the command. So a, an A4 should do it, an A0 won't do it. So that's our old. Hang on, wait. Begin unbuffered right. Yes, yeah, so this is where we erase the track. So that's fine. We don't care about the data rate. D081, comma OXA. Right. So with gaps, it's like that. Without gaps it's AC yep so let's try it without gaps and we should get more than the uh, the 21 sectors yes so the, the gap selection foo is working But I'm not yet thoroughly convinced that our right precompensation is actually being enabled. So I'm going to 
have gaps on. Right, so so drop the, the data rate to 36. Let's go down to 32. And I have seen this kind of weird effect before as well that, um, yeah, if I just start at the highest data rate straight up, the program screws up. But if I try it a few times, winding my way down, uh, it's fine. So that's 32. Let's go to 30. So that's 30, and I think 29 was the lowest we could get to. So let's go 29. Ah, so line 32. So if you're trying to build the manual, um, and it's complaining about missing tables, it's because you need to one directory level up. Um, you need to have checked out in a different directory the um, exactly these reg table FDC blah 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 blah. This comes from the Mega sixty five uh, sorry from Mega sixty five core repository. Um, the user guide automatically scans the VHDL and generates a pile of auto documentation. Um, so it needs to be at that not inside the Mega sixty five uh, user guide directory. It needs to be up and out uh, one directory. Um, otherwise if you want chuck me a message on discord or something and we can try and figure out uh, exactly where it's going wrong it's funny that it doesn't have a rule to generate the um, the FDC file yeah it's a bit weird um, anyway so we have it going now so this is with gaps right so these are disks that will be writable by normal software uh, and so we're expecting again, we'll, we should get to about track uh, 40 at this density, which gets us 29 sectors per track uh, working. Uh, Lighten 23. Ah, okay, yeah, check out the development branch. Um, development branch on Mega 65 core. We really need to update the master to the current development. Uh, that's on my list of things to. Um, uh, to tackle Falcon, and I just need to think about what a, uh, a regular process is for doing that. So while that's chugging away again, jump in if you see that the first track that you see slow down, right? Uh, let me know. Um, the RLL stuff, um, which is kind of the next piece that I want to work on once I've made the um, the thing that writes out the, the track info line, which can also actually indicate whether a track is RLL or MFM. Uh, we should be able to do that in there as well. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry about having the wrong view there. Um, Yeah, uh, now you are heard where you should now be seeing the Mega 65 screen. So apologies for having the wrong one there for a bit. Um, the RLL stuff, I have to change the low level encoder. Uh, the nice thing is that most of the rest of the thing doesn't actually change. Uh, that, yeah, I just need to have it so that it takes the, the bytes and it turns them into RLL bit streams and vice versa. The RLL encoder and decoder is a little bit more complicated in that um, and I reckon yeah, we're, we're starting to see slowdowns there on track 40, you reckon, folks? So I'm even going to say that we, for the previously we said to track 40, I'm actually going to say to track 39. Um, so that's 29. Let me have a flip over here and we'll tell it we want to go data rate 30. Track 40. 
yeah, like, <laughs> 23 says, the German locale uh, for make is funny. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Schloss. Just, it's the end. Uh, very um, stereotypical, uh, short German. Um, why is this data rate not working? So I've just restarted it from track 40 with the, uh, the, the data rate set once lower, as we'd expect. And it's being funny at us. I'm going to switch it back to there to 29. You know, I'm hearing funny crunchy on the drive actually. I reckon it is, it's misstepping something that's going on. So it might just be that if we run it repeatedly, it'll get the drive in order. Um, while well, that thinks for a bit, so the um, RLL encoder, oh, sorry, MFM encoding, you take every bit and you can actually predict exactly what the next bits will be from that. So you can take a byte basically and you can shove it out and you know what it will look like. Um, with RLL27 encoding, um, different bit combinations, different numbers of bits get encoded at a time. Uh, and so I just need to add the bit of magic that buffers an extra byte uh, so that it can always look ahead uh, an extra couple of bits if it needs to. And then likewise on the decoding side, we have to do something a little bit similar. Uh, and the sync marks are quite different uh, in RLL as well. It's actually interesting, they're actually quite a lot shorter than they were in um, uh, in MFM. Uh, it's not a whole byte. Uh, it's actually just a, it's a, a combination of uh, gaps that you can't get otherwise. Uh, so yeah, that should all be quite good. Now this is again being funny pants at us. Let's just go back to track zero and see what happens there. So again, we're seeing the sectors and it's just it's refusing to read them for whatever reason. Um, well, whether it is just that it is too marginal and we really are tickling uh, the edges of what's possible going to oh, sort of check it on the mega 65 directly uh, six a six yeah so we've still got our um, right precompensation set sensibly yeah. okay let's Yeah, mm, weird. Because bitrate 32 we know is fine, right? Um, bitrate 40. Actually, you know, there is a thing that could be causing this. And it's actually that the right head takes time to turn on. So it's trying to read that first sector and getting stuck on it forever because if that sector starts being written before the uh, the head has started to write, um, that first sector will never be able to be read back. Uh, and I think there's actually a chance that that might be um, what's going on. And that's why it's a bit of pot luck as to whether uh, it does it or not. So I'll have to have a, uh, a look at that. Um, but that is weird that it's 
Well, let's, how far can we come down, right? So we go 36. Yeah, Dr. Falcon says, so basically with RLL encoding, you're turning a floppy into a small hard drive. Eh, yes, probably. Um, something along those lines. Okay, right, so that data rate works. And again, so we might just have to do this utterly bizarre ritual where we work our way down the data rates until it picks up and works again. Because there's, there's yeah, something froopy going on. Uh, Prowse says, is there any downside to RLL encoding compared to MFM? Um, yes, the, the timing is more accurate. So it, it, you are putting more data on a disk, so it is going to uh, push the envelopes a little bit more as to what can be reliably written. Um, so we need to test all of that. But again, that, that's why I'm going to make it so that the Mega 65 floppy controller uh, will look for a, a track mark uh, that will actually indicate how the track has been written, uh, which will be fine. So... Um, yeah, but so the interesting thing that's coming out from this uh, that I hadn't really thought about until now, which is that as we increase the data rate, we actually have to increase the length of the um, intersector gaps to allow for time for the right head to switch to writing mode. Uh, this is annoying because um, those gaps will grow as a fraction of the disk as we increase the um, uh, the amount of stuff on the disk. And so this might be why the CMD FD2000 and CMD FD4000 drives switch to 1K sectors to reduce the number of gaps at the higher data rates in order to still be able to fit more sectors on the track. That would actually make sense as the design decision that they made. Now, that doesn't change anything for us having absurd high density disks for games and software distribution. Uh, which I think in reality is probably what these higher capacity formats are going to be used more for. Um, so we will need to do some testing uh, with gaps, even at the, the regular high density rate, and just make sure that the head write switch time is short enough. And again, that will vary amongst drives. Um, yes. Um, so let me come back here. So 36 has not worked. Let's try 32 rather didn't work. So let's try 34. Ah, not on. So that's great. So that uh, switching to that branch fixed it for you for the um, uh, building the manual. Glad to hear. Right, so that data rate is now working there. That's 34, 33. So, Rate 33 is working for us now. Rate 32, will it now magically work for us? Yes. So this is the rate 32 that wasn't working for us a, a moment ago, right? Uh, this is what I was saying. It's just, it, it's weird. Uh, so we go down to 31. So that doesn't look that happy to me. So we're going to have to have a, a think about all of that. Yes, yeah, so line 32, you do need to run make twice to get the index and table of contents up to date. Um, so yeah, the first time it's generating it based on the first run, and then the second time you've now got the correct pages and things in theory in there. Um, very occasionally you can need more than two runs, um, but only if it kind of the table of contents pushes things over the edge of a page when you change the page numbers in the table of contents, um, which is a, a pretty rare occurrence. Yeah, see now that's all 
happily working again. Um, so I'm just going to try. So that was data rate 31, data rate 30. Yeah, I'm going to have, to have a bit of a, a poke in the field. I reckon I need to extend the um, the start of track right lead in, um, and when I do that, I'll add the uh, this magic writing of the uh, the track marker uh, at the DD data rate uh, that the controller will be able to read out uh, and make available. And um, yeah, but so let's do a, a quick calculation. So from our table, we actually know how many sectors we should be able to get at the um, the different data rates with gaps, right? So, whereas for um, without gaps, it was, so we were getting 32, 31, 29, 22, because uh, we were doing from rate 29, right? So it was 32, so we will get 29, 28, 27, 27 is what we should get. So let's just do a, a quick calculation of what we think we should be able to get then. Uh, so that will be 40 times 29 plus 20 times 28 plus uh, 14 times 27 plus 10 times 27. So this should be the capacity with gaps. Uh, and we'll re-update. So there was a slight change because we decided that actually that track 40 wasn't in fact safe. So it's the 41st track uh, wasn't safe at 32 sectors. We had it in 31. Uh, 20 times 31 plus 14 times 29 plus 10 times 29. So 2596 kilobytes uh, without gap. So that's the without gap. And this is with gaps, but understanding that we might have to shave a bit off uh, with gaps because I think we're going to have to, as, as I say, have longer intersector gaps. Um, I'll have a think about how I can try and optimize that. Um, we might in fact actually be okay because of the way that the, um, the gaps are, are made on the standard PC to handle really ancient floppy disks, uh, floppy drives rather. Um, uh, Herdware is asking, unrelated, but did all the C65 ROMs have the same blue color uh, border as the screen? Interesting question, and the answer is yes with an asterisk. Uh, and the asterisk is that the DOS errors on the earlier ROMs didn't blink the drive light. Instead, they increased the border color. So if you didn't have a disk with a, um, a boot file on it, the border color always was yellow, because that was the next color on from blue. Um, so... Yeah, uh, it's an interesting answer to that. So just for argument's sake, two, three, six, eight. So the maximum that we can expect to get from RLL um, oops, with uh, gaps would be 3.5 meg and two, five, nine, six times 1.5 and 3894, so we can't quite bust a four megabyte barrier, uh, barrier rather, uh, with the, the current uh, achievements with RLL, we'd have to do more magic on the right pre-comp and dealing with uh, variation in spin speed. Yeah, so it's really close, but not quite. But look, I mean, for crying out loud, 3.89 megabytes out of a 1.44 meg floppy, or even three and a half, or, uh, you know, if I could make 3.2 meg reliable, um, on a 1.44 meg floppy using RLL and you know sector by sector writing, I'm actually going to be pretty happy, right? Because we'll have busted the FD4000 capacity 
um, without needing to have a, an enhanced density drive uh, or the uh, you know the unobtainium uh, 2.88 meg media. So yeah, it's whilst it's a little bit frustrating, we haven't quite uh, got there, but it's yeah, it's really nice to see that we can still get uh, somewhere crazy, and we'll try and firm that up. As I say, I'll have a look at putting the longer lead in uh, at the start of the track. And you know, that might actually be why we can't get any higher data rate than the divide by 29. So it might actually get us that uh, you know, uh, roof space to, um, uh, to tweak it up a little bit more. Maybe even only to 28 or 27, who knows? Um, but I'll have a look at the um, uh, the way that the tracks get written. So, but if we have a look, I'll, I'll show you the, the stuff for this in here. Uh, so it's FDC auto format. So this is the thing that probably needs to be changed. So the start of track gaps, there's only 12 bytes. Um, which is fine if you're at a slow data rate because that's enough time for the head to switch to write mode. Um, but I think that that's insufficient at these higher data rates. Uh, so I just need to change that and then I need to change all of these numbers that are dependent on it down there. Um, and as I said, when I do that, I'll also add in all the, the, the magic for writing out the, um, the track header mark. Uh, so actually, you know what I'll probably do is when we start formatting, I'll actually set the drive to DD speed, write out the 12 fixed bytes at DD speed. Um, I will write out the track info block at DD speed, and then we will switch it um, to the high speed. Uh, and uh, that should work for us. So probably we'll need to put a few gap bytes after the speed switch, just to make sure that everything is getting flushed and plumbed through um, and that might then pip us back to be able to get over the uh, the four megabyte barrier uh, by allowing those higher data rates that are otherwise barking um, and yeah and we'll just set us up nicely so I think uh, I'm going to stop at that point uh, we've gone two and a half hours of the, the two hours that I said I would do um, hope it's been enjoyable um, hope you've had a, uh, a bit of fun uh, as we've looked and uh, prodded around what we can try and do to uh, to abuse a floppy. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, yep, you're welcome, Herdware. Welcome, everyone. And uh, yeah, catch you next time. Uh, I'll try and put a uh, info up as to when I do the next one.